Florida, he liked to call, he liked to be from this time now and bring a lot of knowledge to the game and coach everywhere up under the sun. Todd Billington will be coaching out of the line. Here, here's the connection. Everyone, everyone that's standing up there, we work together in some form, shape, form, or fashion, some kind of way. And that's the highly intelligent. Uh, had the opportunity to work with him as well. He was a GA. I uh, didn't last very long because I thought highly of him, and I recommend him to Mark Frederick, who was an office coordinator somewhere else. And I recommend Ashley, Ashley Green to him as an offensive line coach, and he'll be coaching our offensive line this year. Not used to carrying a mic because the mic never going to be on the football field. But you guys can hear me. This we actually can't. Not, this is not here. <laughs> this night. It's Danny. It's Danny. Yes, yes. Don't sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this young man was a GA at Grambling with me. I worked hard and tireless, tried to learn the game. <laughs> I got a couple of guys that are uh, not finished yet. I got to mention this guy here because uh, I guess Coach Green, Coach Fredericks, maybe some of the other guys like to call this guy here Junior as if he's my son because we kind of do some of the same things. And, and as I recall, actually when I first started, I do see a lot of me in him, the way that he carries himself. This guy here had the opportunity to work with Coach White as his receiver coach. And now we're all connecting together, bringing these puzzles and piecing them together. He'll be coaching our wide receivers, Robert Bailey. I didn't know much about these young men. I came here, they were already here, and um, we found out what we were looking for. These two young men here are going to be our GAs. I ain't going to call this, I'm almost calling this nickname, but Cam. Cameron is going to be our offensive GA. And I like to call him <laughs> Another young man, actually, he was the uh, MVP of the conference uh, maybe three years ago uh, here in, work, in Houston working uh, as an engineer, MVP of the SWAT. Um, three years ago, Jonathan Williams. a lot of guys up there. I still think we need more, but this is what the NCAA uh, And the thing about it, I know you guys think that this is the uh, the end of recruiting. In our opinion, recruiting is year-round. We're going to always recruit. We're going to always look for talent. We're going to always look for high character. Craig the and m University leading as a young man that can go anywhere in the United States and be successful. This is what we were doing. We went out and we addressed the needs. That was the biggest thing. I know a lot of guys want to tell you about players, and we want you guys to tell us about players. We were able to sign ten, uh, eight of those guys. We had to get more guys at the back end, which we call the safeties. I thought we went out and got some quality safeties that can come in and, and play right now. But I had a chance to scout them, so I knew what was needed. And we're not looking to – I don't believe in rebuilding. We're going to move on. We're going to move on within this year right here, and we expect to win. Why not? That's what we came in for, to win. And that's what we're going to do. But without further ado, we'll let the coaches talk. Do you have a... How y'all doing? My name is Coach Frederick. Um, as Coach Dooley stated, I am the recruiting coordinator. Again, we stayed in the side. Uh, we stayed in the state of Texas. We protected our backyard, as Coach Dooley promised. We reached out to some of our connections. In, um, the first guy we 
on this list is uh, Drake Cheatham. We're going to let Coach K.J. Black speak on it. Okay. No. P.V. You. Okay, we're alive. Okay. Um, Drake Cheatham from uh, Mesquite, Texas, um, was committed to, um, you know, we were sitting in a room, myself, Coach Dooley, and Coach Bailey, uh, when we went to a school. And, um, you know, he, he told his coach, I'm, I'm interested, coach, I want to play safety. But the school I'm at right now, they want me to play nickel. We asked him, say, well, why do you want you to play nickel? He said, well, they say I'm not tall enough. I'm not tall enough? What's that got to do with playing safety? Coach Dooley asked him one question. This is one of the greatest lines I've ever heard when it comes to recruiting. He said, well, does the hole, does the hole open? He seen his face light up, and I knew we had him. So um, just a, a little bit about him on the field. Um, you know, he's a multi-tool kid, can cover can run, uh, great hands. Um, so that's what took him to us. But once we got there, we got the transcript, we seen that he was a 36 GPA, that he was a 1300 SAT, okay. that he wanted to be an engineer. We knew he was a Panther. It was a done deal. So um, again, we're excited about Drake, and, and we look forward to um, getting him on the hill this fall. How's everybody doing? Well, Okay, Trayvon Conley. Um, Trayvon Conley is a 6'2", 185 quarterback from Duncanville High School in Dallas, Texas. When I say guys that he can really play, this, this guy can really play. I understand. He's a very competitive kid. Um, he's a high academic kid, and he loves the game. He loves the game. Um, we have this deal on our recruiting visit to where we sit down with the athlete, and we want to watch film with him. And I want to see what he's looking at. What's his process when he's talking about quarterback? But we sat in my office for like an hour and a half, you know, and he was teaching me things that his coach taught him in high school, and I really wasn't back on our team right now, but he's going to have a chance to compete. All right, that's Trayvon, that's Trayvon Conley from Dallas, Texas. Okay, back again, all right? Joshua Crawford. All right. Joshua Crawford, he's 5'11", he's 285, his grandmother, all right, which I love her to death, Coach Dooley's and, and a student athlete uh, at the end of the trip. And he asked him, he said, what, what, what can we do better? You know, and, you know, they give their spiel on what we can do better and what they loved about the visit. And he offered Joshua a scholarship. So after... Joshua has a 3.8. He has a 26 on the ACT. Uh, he's a he's a he's a damn good ball player. He plays defensive line for us, and he's going to be job. And, and, and Coach Dooley, he put a lot of pressure on us, making sure that we get high character kids. And um, we wanted to make sure that we were bringing quality student athletes to Fairview. So Joshua Crawford's from Memphis, Tennessee. Keep moving along. The next guy up is uh, Demarcus Crocker, Coach KJ Black. Okay, so Demarcus, um, my Prairie View, um, you know, I've got, I got family that, that are DV alums. He said, Coach, to be honest with you, I just want a chance. And, and, and a lot of times we end up chasing guys that we have to convince to come to the hill with this kid wanted to be a Panther from the start. And, and it only helped that, you know, his, his nickname after he watched his film was hit back, or he could play safety, um, he could play nickel. So we're excited about Demarcus. Um, only thing is, now he's not a big talker. Until it gets on the field, so but y'all don't have to worry about that. Uh, you'll see it more than you'll hear it, so that's good. But again, we're excited about what the marks can bring to us, um, and, and we look forward to getting them here. Uh, next up, we got Caleb Darbone, and I think that is Coach Bailey, correct? Oh, he asked me, did I know about this kid? I said yes. Uh, one thing about this kid, he's a he's an outstanding athlete. But the biggest thing his mom was. She was so happy that he was able to come to his university that he really wanted to attend. So he already knew about Prairie and m He was already recruited by Prairie and m so that made it easy for us. So Kevin DeBone is a punter from uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Barb High School. He's a higher character kid, great kid, and he's going to come in and do a great job for us. From DeSoto, Texas, out of Dallas, Texas. Um, if you know, if you guys know anything about DeSoto, um, they win state championships. Mm -hmm. They win state championships. They have a great program. And they do some really good things around Texas. So Carl Davis that we're really excited about. Great student. 
Um, great football player, and I think it's going to be able to bring a lot to our football team from Dallas, Texas, Carl Davis. All right, next up, we traveled down south a little bit. We went to Louisiana, but we had to get this kid. Good afternoon, PV Nation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my guy I got is Jason Dumas. He's uh, from St. James, Louisiana. Went to St. James High School. It's about 6'1", about 260. Uh, very talented kid. He plays D tackle. Uh, he's very strong, multi sport athlete. Does track, power lifting. Uh, he's one defensive player in his parish, uh, all state, all district, uh, two time all district, two time all state. Very strong guy. One thing I can say about him and his mom and his family, they're very spiritual. The first thing they say on the phone when you talk to them is, God is good. That's the very first thing they're going to say on that phone. They're not going to talk about football. They're going to talk about how good God is. Everything she say. She loves that Coach Dooley is a God-fearing man. And, uh, you know, with that being said, she really trusts uh, trust us with her son. And, you know, he's going to go in a great direction and get a great education as well. So that's Jason Dumas. How everybody doing? Oh, next up, we have Jamal Fontenot. He's a graduate transfer from Beaumont, Texas. He came to us from Arkansas State. He's an outstanding kid. Every day he comes and calls me and asks me, Coach, I got this class. I'm like, all right, you got a class. He's like, Coach, but it's at 6 o'clock, and I can't miss practice. I was like, we're going to make a way. And every day he comes and asks me, and we're going to make a way. And he said, Coach, I got it now. I'm just going to go to all day to practice. I'm going to leave at 6.30. I'm going to go to class. Then I'll come back and I'll watch the film with you. So that speaks character about Jamal Fontenot. I think he's going to be an outstanding kid, an outstanding asset to our program. Thank you. Now, in our recruiting deal throughout the spring weekend, our uh, offensive of line coach came up with a little chant as well. I, I didn't come up with this chant. I, I, I'm, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I used to, we played Prairie View in, I think it was 2009. Yeah, well, we had, I played at Grandma. Of course. So, I'm oh, moving oh, oh, <laughs> And we played Coach KJ Black and Elman. That was the end of the 21 year win streak. So, I was sitting there and I was walking up the field, and every time I passed by a Prairie fan, I heard the band playing, and it was Who You Rooting For? Who you rooting for? <laughs> I thought I made that up. Right there, here we go. Who You Rooting For? Who You Rooting For? Back again. Uh, 
Okay. Next up, we have Kyron Harris. Sorry, Charlie. Can I break something I can't pay for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have Kyron Harris. He's a uh, former teammate of uh, Jason Dumas. So there we'll be pairing up and coming to PV and uh, we'll join the football program. Actually, one thing about um, Kyler is he actually committed, verbally committed before he even got here. Uh, you know, just having a conversation with him, you know, every other night, you know, telling him about the things he can, he can do here and help us out. And, of course, we have a great facility, so I'm constantly sending pictures and, you know, things like that to get him excited about his visit. And he said, Coach, is that scholarship still mine? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, Coach, I'm PV Pamper. And ever since then, he committed on a Thursday, a Friday before he took his visit. He got here that weekend. He uh, had a one-on-one -on -one sit down with Coach Dooley, and he was a man of his word. He, and he, ever since then, he's been committed. And uh, today, he had a signing day, and he also signed a paper of uh, NLI. Uh, one thing I can say about Kyron is, I talked to him, and I said, you know, your goal should be one day to, to actually be in the NFL. He said, well, Coach, that's my second goal. My first goal is to be a doctor. He said, football will always be there. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, I always have a fallback plan. So I know one thing about him, he's 3.4, 22 on the ACT, and he's all about the books. So that's one thing we won't have to worry about with Kyler. Okay. okay, so the next young man, I know it says Logan Jackson up there. Yes, he's from Mesquite, Texas, and, and West Mesquite High School. Um, but actually, Coach Dooley gave him the name Primetime. And, and he gave him that name for a few reasons. Number one, because he just, there's nobody he thinks is better than him in the world. And we all know, all of us football guys, we know as a cornerback, that's the mentality you got to have. You got to be confident, because again, you're on the island by yourself. So if you're down by yourself, ain't nobody there to pick you up by yourself. So that's one thing we don't have to worry about him. Uh, another smart kid, 3.4 GPA. 1,200 on the SAT, um, academic All-State kid, um, and, and we had to definitely fight for him, had to convince his mom. Mom was, uh, you know, she, she knew all about PV, had friends that were PV alums, but um, she wasn't interested in the football part at all. She said, Coach, how can you make my son a better man? And so I told her about Coach Dooley. I told her about some of the young men that had come through uh, the PV doors before, and, and once we got him on campus and got her there, and she seen the type of men that her son would be around, we got a chance to get him on campus, and he signed on the dotted line today. So um, Logan Jackson, we're excited about what he can do for our secondary, and um, we're just excited about him all over, overall. So go Panthers. All right, the next kid is Isaac James, uh, back in Louisiana again, northern Louisiana, out of Woodlawn High School. Shreveport, Louisiana. One thing about this kid, when you see him, you can be like, wow, he's a big kid. Very aggressive. Uh, he's, he's a quiet kid, but he's a mean kid. Good character kid, and he's about his business. The good thing about it, we was able to get this kid and kind of uh, kind of bump him up. He had a couple of schools that was kind of ahead of us, and he said, you know what, Coach? Uh, I'm going to take my visit to Prairie View. I'm going to cancel my other visit. Uh, I like what you guys are doing over there. Uh, I'm going to come to the hill and see what you guys have to offer. And after Coach Duda sat down with him in his exit meeting, he said, Coach, I'm a Panther. He had to go home and think twice. Even though the other schools was a, you know, a big FCS schools, that wasn't even an option. He said, you know what, I'm going to be a Panther. Isaac James out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. Um, we took a trip down to Baton Rouge. Um, Christopher Johnson. Christopher Johnson is a 6'2", 185 receiver, a transfer receiver right, from Tulane. Okay, so this guy's actually in school right now. All right, he's a heck of a guy. He loves the game. Um, Coach Leonard has those guys working out in the morning. He's the first one there. He's the last one to leave. Um, and just to show you what type of kid he is, um, we make it mandatory. Coach Dooley makes it mandatory just for us to call the kids and, and talk to them. Not about football, but just talk to them. And last night, I called him about three times, and he didn't answer the phone. And he finally called me back, and I was worried. I was like, man, what, what's wrong with Chris? He's he not returning my phone call. So when he called me back, he said, Coach, is, is everything okay? Uh, I said, yeah, yeah, I was just looking for you. Where, where were you? He said, well, Coach, I was in, I was in chopper service. He 
He said, I was in chapel service with Dr. Rise. And I shut up. <laughs> he, said, he said, Coach, you, you there? I said, yeah. Yeah, but I think the kid is a, is a, is a heck of a guy. Um, I think he has a lot to bring to our football team, and he's going to do a great job for us. Christopher Johnson. Okay, so my first three guys were defensive guys, but you know I had to go back to offense eventually. Um, so the next young man we have is Xavier Johnson. Xavier comes to us from Temple High School in Temple, Texas. Um, some of us that were at uh, the couple of playoff games that we hosted on campus know all about this young man. Uh, he, when you talk about speed now, that's what this kid does. He, he was Last year, he was the district and area uh, champion, the 4x1 and the 400. Uh, great hands, great body control. Um, quiet kid, but again, you know, a, a good student athlete, a true student, 3.8 GPA, and wants to be a doctor. So again, when you combine that athleticism with that mentality, you got a Panther all the way. So uh, we're excited about Xavier. All right, the next guy is Terry Kelly. We had to add some depth to the defensive line. The defensive line coach, hopefully he's securing that bag because we're waiting on one more, Ms. Johnson. <laughs> so Terry Kelly, I speak on his behalf. Terry Kelly is from um, Butler County in Kansas. He's a, a JUCO transfer. And we expect him to come in right now and add some much needed depth and uh, playmaking ability from the defensive line. That's Terry Kelly. What's up, fam? Everybody good? Yeah. Good. Yeah. good. Well, um, Demarcus Moon, I tell you, when this young man, um, when I first got filmed with this young man, um, uh, Mr. Robinson, uh, Throughout our transition, uh, before the new staff came in, Mr. Robinson shot me an email with this young man, and I said, "Hey, take a look at him." And and as I was taking a look at him, uh, the the kid was uh, the first thing I, sh I saw was him just doing a workout, and I saw no filming or doing anything. He was just doing a workout with it with uh, with his trainer. And I tell you, and as I was looking at this film, I'm like, yes, watching him back up, watching him change direction. I'm like, what do we got here? Uh, man, I'm telling you, this dude footwork is looking better than some of my DBs now. And I'm like, my goodness, we got to, you know, we got to see what we can do with this kid. You know, he's the type of kid, very, very humble kid. Um, I tell you, when he came on the trip, we had to, we were trying to get him in one weekend, then we had to push him back. He goes, oh, man, Coach, really? I said, yes, son, we're going to get you in. We're going to get you in. But, man, when he got here on the trip, I tell you, the kids smiled the whole trip. I don't think not one time that he dropped them jaws. He was smiling the whole time. That's how happy, you know, excited he was to be here at Prairie View. I mean, he's a kid from Eastern Michigan. He's a graduate, and he wants to uh, major in dietitian. I tell you guys, when you look at him, when he came in, you know, and he first got off the uh, plane, and I picked him up from the airport, I was like, wow, we got to go in here. I mean, he looks like he take care of that body. You know, a true middle linebacker. He's going to be someone that definitely uh, we need right there in the middle that's going to help us out big time. I mean, that's uh, DeMarcus Moon. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Good. Sorry for the delay. I was out still trying to do some recruiting. Um, you know, it never ends. If we had a spot, we had to fill that void. Um, talk about the young man, uh, Kobe Lewis. Um, talented young man from Cypress, Texas. Um, give us uh, a lot of size on the inside. He's very active. Um, his dad, Gabe Lewis, works for our uh, works for, for uh, Sodexo, uh, which is the full company here on campus. <laughs> Um, does a tremendous job, and his dad is very knowledgeable. But uh, I really enjoy talking to him. But Kobe is very talented. Uh, as you see, uh, 6'3", 310 pounds, and that's a lot for our inside guys. So we have what you call a space eater. Uh, but he can move, and he's very athletic. Uh, I'm really excited about his future, what he'll bring to, bring to the table. He's an outstanding student athlete also. Uh, comes from a great family, educated family, and it's always uh, good to start with the local talent, and uh, that's, that's Kobe Lewis. All right, this next guy, Kobe Love. I had to fight within the conference to get him as well. And uh, he comes out of Jackson, Mississippi from Callaway High School. Uh, a great player. Uh -oh. Great player. Uh, he's going to add some much-needed depth to the defensive line as well. And uh, 
Like he was on that 247 Sports two star athlete as well. And uh, his mom is very excited. I think his aunt, his aunt went to school with Mr. Robinson. So, hey, we got a connection there and looking for great things out of him. Next up, we have Justin Medina. Um, Justin Medina actually, <laughs> father actually played at Prairie View. He played from 85 to 89. He was a kicker. He said that he was a two-time all-swag competitor. He, he was all-academic team. And Justin, I walked into the school whenever we went. We said we're going to Blitz Houston. We go ahead and Blitz Houston, and we're going through the schools. And I walk into school, and the coach says, hey, coach, listen, I got somebody that's committed to you. I said, oh, okay. So I, I sit down, and I sit, and sometimes these coaches I tell you that somebody's committed, and you would just have to deal with it when it happens. And he was like, coach, he's a big kid. Now, as you can see, I'm not just the smallest person. So I'm sitting there, and he said, he's big, coach, I'm telling you. So I was like, all right, just bring him in the room. So he walks in, and I'm looking up to him like, yeah, he big. <laughs> so so we, I got to talking to him, and him and his dad came on the visit with, along with his mother, and they they got on campus, and they were like, oh, my gosh, Prairie View's grown so much. And that's a test to the things that you guys have done that we're just trying to continue. And his dad was able to meet one of his old college buddies, and since then, uh, all, I get a call every day, Coach, we're ready to come back. And Justin's ready to come and play for us. They actually made a statement that Prairie View didn't have grass on campus when they went to school. I say, what? I say, you're telling your age. You're telling your age. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Next up, we got Demarcus Robinson. A little bit about Demarcus Robinson. Uh, he plays cornerback. He's about 6'3", 190. Uh, you know, you don't hear about a lot of cornerbacks being 6'3". Has great hips. You know, he can, he can really come in and solidify that position for us. Uh, during the high school, he played at Booker T. Washington uh, in Pensacola, Florida, which is where he's from. He was also coached by Heisman Trophy winner Charlie Ward. So he has a lot of background history on football. Uh, he also went to Arkansas Baptist. He's one of our mature guys. He's coming in as a junior. So he's able to come in and learn quickly than some of our freshman guys. We believe that he's going to get the job done. Ever since this morning, he's been texting me all day, all types of pictures, all type of you know gear that he already bought. So I know he's on board and he's ready to get to work. Good evening. My name is Henry Miller. Now, this guy, I would like to take credit for recruiting him, but I think he was God sent. You know, this guy is Josh Smith from New Orleans, 6'4, 250 pounds, a three star, a rivalry. Um, this guy was at Iowa State, took a visit to Iowa State. For some reason, he didn't like it. We had one weekend left, we couldn't get him here. He said, Coach, I have a best friend coming down there. If you like it, I'm going to sign. His best friend came down here. He liked it. He signed. Josh Smith is from the Andrew Walker High School out in New Orleans, and we're looking forward for him to help us. Okay, the next guy is Shamal. That's the guy that helped us. Oh. <laughs> and Shamal, about 6'1", 245 pounds. They both came from state championship teams, so they know what it takes to win. Jamal is a three-time, 3.5. He made an honor roll five times. Okay, the kid not only has good talent, but he's very smart. And um, we're looking forward for both of them guys to come in and help us right away. The Priest Taylor Jr. Now, this young man uh, is going to come in and do great things for us, or we believe that anyway, because again, once, one, he's coming from a great program. You guys know about Manville, you know what kind of athletes they put out, and he is that type of athlete, I guarantee you that. You know, this guy, we call him Red, you know, he got freckles here, he got the red hair, so his nickname is Red. 
He is definitely going to help us uh, solidify that defense to where we want to be uh, this year so we can kind of compete against Coach Dooley offense. You know, he got all those high-powered wide receivers over there. He's going to be one of those guys in the middle that's going to, that's going to make something happen. Now, he's uh, 6'1", 220, but you know what? This kid is a football-savvy type kid, you know, and just seeing things with his eyes and just reacting, I mean, I said, wow, you know, we, we got to solidify this guy, you know, Got to get him in at PV, although he was already committed. I mean, he was committed from day one when going anywhere, but you know how people come in and try to sneak him from you. So we got on right away, and, and uh, the priest senior, he said, well, you know, uh, Mr. McDowell, he's not going anywhere. If you guys want him, he's coming down. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this kid, how good he is. Playoff, first time in history, a losing team, he was voted MVP. Wow. The next kid, Aaron Walker, defensive end, 6'3", 265. This kid is a transfer. He's from uh, he's from St. Blaine, Minnesota. When you see this kid, you be like, man, he, he's a football player. And uh, the unique thing about this kid, um, he was on his way to, to Hampton. He had his car packed up. He said, coach, uh, uh, I really, I really fell in love with Hampton. The, the coach, he promised my mom he was gonna take care of me, and uh, we was like, eh, just, just give us a shot, just give us a visit. He drove down 19 hours from Minnesota to Hampton. He got there, he said, Coach, uh, I, I want to come take a visit to PV. I don't like here, so come back to Minnesota. We was fighting to get him in, and, and the reason why I'm telling this story because the kid never gave, never gave up. We tried to get him on a visit. He couldn't get his paperwork together, and it was a unique situation. And the reason why I really like this kid because he never gave up on the process. He couldn't get in school, so we tried to get him in school uh, for this incoming semester, for the spring semester. He wasn't able to meet the deadline, so he was like, "Coach, I'm just gonna sit out and train. I'm like gonna visit right now." But we was relentless on the help with the other coaches and uh, Coach Coach Miller talking to his mom and Coach Dewar as well. Uh, a guy friend. Staff and I love that. I love all my kids to be around good men. He can he can grow. He can develop. So Aaron Walker is going to be a good tool for us. And the good thing about it, he's mature enough. Uh, uh, Saint Blaine, Minnesota. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead to the, to the last kid. Before Coach White came up. Uh, Trevion Williams, offensive lineman, 6'5", 315 pounds. We back in Louisiana. You got a lot of guys from Louisiana staff. Uh, and he would say, Hey, I, I know I know. Uh, Ozzy just took a visit, coach. He said, I, th I think I'm gonna commit. He came up on a visit last uh, two weekends ago. His mom was excited. His dad was excited. We did two home visits with his family. And he said, coach, I'm, I'm a panther. I'm a panther. He, before we even had a chance to sit down and really talk to him about the process, he said, coach, I'm ready to sign right now. Putting his hat on, he had his gear ready to go. So good thing about it, we got two outstanding guys that's gonna come in and better help us right away from Woodlawn High School, that's your Trevor Young Williams. At the University of Oregon. Um, after the University of Oregon, he went to Trinity Valley. He's 6'4", he's 235. Okay, if you guys ever seen Terrell Owens, he's the next best thing to Terrell Owens. All right, so we have two receivers that's in school now. Okay, Christopher Johnson, that's 6'2", 195, a transfer from Tulane. And we have another guy from Oregon, okay, Tristan Wallace. All right, this guy is a four-star athlete, okay? And the reason why he came to Peer Review because of the relationship that we had with the high school coach. Bottom line, okay? And we sold him. This was probably the only time that I second-guessed him. I was like, man, Coach Dooley, I, I don't know if we're going to get this guy. I, I really don't know if we're going to get this guy. But we laid it on him thick. We <laughs> laid it on him thick. And we got in the car, and we were driving away. His mom is a lawyer. His dad is an educator, and they grilled us. They, they grilled us on every question about every facet of the school, uh, everything. If Coach K.J. Black wasn't there, I don't know if we would have we been able to answer the question that she was there. And I'm just being honest with you. All right, but when we got into the car, about five minutes of the conversation, I was driving, Coach Duda was in the passenger seat, and my phone rang, and he said, Coach, I want to be a Panther. And I dropped the phone. And Coach Dooley said, man, what's wrong with you? I said, and I put him on speakerphone. I said, say it again. He said, I want to be a Panther. 
and we high-fiving in the car, we left all the way, and this guy is a great, great asset to our football team. A humble kid, um, a workout fanatic, a gym rat, he is a true four-star kid, and we will give him the football. We will give him the football, so it's a lot to be excited about, and I really think this kid will really help our football team. That's Tristan Martin. got an opportunity to see the guys that we went on and signed to um, come on board to be a Panther and be very, very excited about these individuals, but not finished yet. I still think there's some kids out there that we can get. As you guys can see that, first of all, we took care of Texas, so that's going to quiet some of the alumni about <laughs> Texas. Uh, we took care of Jackson, Mississippi. We don't have to worry about the Robinson family. We took care of that, that portion of the <laughs> So we cover our ground. We made sure we took care of business. So now, only thing we have to do is just go out and coach football. That's all we want to do, coach football. But if, as you guys see and heard the coaches talk about the players, we didn't just go after football players. We went after high character kids that understand the, uh, the need of academics. And they took care of that because we got kids coming in here right now that really does not need an athletic scholarship. They can function with a what? Academic scholarship with the grades and the ACT scores as well as the SAT scores. But that's, that's the 2018 signee classes with more to come. Uh, I know the very first home game is not here but we would be at Wright Stadium. We expect all you guys to be out there. That's the only game that we worry about. So come out and support that game. Thank you. Big class, as you can see. We're gonna give away Another prize before we unveil the 2018 schedule. Time to give away a foursome to the 2018 Panther Golf Classic, March 23rd. Cypress, Texas, part of our family and friends weekend. So make your plans if you haven't already. It's going to be a big weekend on the hill in the Cypress area. We'll start with the Golf Classic at 8 a.m. Also at 3 p.m., baseball will be in action, softball will be in action. That Saturday, March 24th, PB Relays will get everything started. Also, doubleheader softball and single game baseball will be capped off by single game baseball on Sunday. That's getting March 23rd through the 25th. Make your plans to be with 9, 1, 7, 8, 8. I was at the job, Miss P. You almost had me. You almost had me. That was good. That was really good. That's the winning table. <laughs> All right, we have a grand prize drawing later, so there's still one big prize to win. I should have all my information together. Without further ado, the 2018 football schedule. Now, Coach Dooley already said we had announced this previously. We'll begin in what's called week zero. You know, Coach Robinson, uh, he operates like a coach. Vice President, Athletic Director, Ashley Robinson. Uh, been on this for a while. We kind of noticed that uh, one of our rivals that started in August did some research, figured out how we could start in August. So. Uh, and this is going to be announced for a while, so August 25th, we'll take on Rice right here in Houston, and then we're going to Atlanta to take on North Carolina Central in the MEAC Swag Challenge. That's a Sunday game, Labor Day weekend in Atlanta. We'll come back to Texas, take on Sam Houston. We'll go up to Huntsville for a week three game on the second weekend of September. And then Prayer View is headed to Vegas. Taking on UNLV on September 15th. So first four games, 
some great non-conference action, tremendous exposure, not only for football, but also for the university. We'll open conference play on September 22nd, taking on Arkansas Pine Bluff on the road, and then we're headed to Dallas. Final Saturday in September this year. Final Saturday in September, taking on Grambling State Fair Classic. So, six games on the road out the gate, exciting venues. Hope you will join us throughout, and then we're going to take a week off. So no game the first weekend of October, and then the home opener on October 13th. We got Southern coming to town on October 13th. All right, five week after that. It's only two games in October. We'll play Southern five week. Get ready for homecoming on October 27th versus Alcorn State. Then we'll take our final road trip of the regular season, head to Jackson, take on Jackson State to begin. Uh, November, uh, typo there must be on my fault. Actually, all those games are Saturday, so my mistake on that. We'll get that cleaned up. Five week following the Jackson State game, and then we'll come home to play Alabama State, and then we'll play Texas Southern, and then we'll have a couple of weeks to get ready for the Celebration Bowl back in Atlanta in mid December. That's your 2018 Panther football schedule. Ticket giveaway. And again, once you stay with us, we're going to have a great buffet uh, to my left, far side of the room. Come and eat all you like. Have a good time. Meet with Coach Dooley and his coaching staff. Uh, our final giveaway what we call a grand prize drawing. You can win two tickets to every home athletic event for the rest of the 2018 calendar year. That means basketball on Saturday, big game against Grambling, basketball on Monday against Jackson State, all home baseball games in 2018, all home softball games in 2018, all home soccer matches this fall, all home volley matches this fall, all home, all home volleyball matches this fall, and all four home football games in 2018. Winning ticket number is... Zero, nine, one, seven, nine, one. Oh, is that you? That's you, huh? Hey, some verification. Can you, would you verify this, Dr. Taylor? Would you verify the home game for the rest of 2018? Well, you got bonus. <laughs> Just a couple of reminders as we again get ready to partake of, of the buffet. I want to thank the Sodexo staff for their work tonight and getting everything ready. A couple of reminders that football season tickets will go on sale on Thursday, March 1st. You'll receive some information over the next three weeks when the launch an exciting new ticket platform for university tickets that will allow each patron, each season ticket holder, to manage your own account individually. So you'll get a lot of great information over the next three weeks prior to the launch of season tickets on Thursday, March 1st. We mentioned about the big basketball games this weekend. Both teams are in uh, two games out of the first place, eight games to go. Got Grambling coming in for a 3 p.m. doubleheader on Saturday. Uh, doubleheader on Monday, women's game at 5, ESPN U game, Monday night, 8 p.m. against Jackson State. We need your face in the place. Again, we're only two games out of the first place with eight games to go. We got four at home, got four on the road. We need these two this weekend. Need to see you in the, in the place. Saturday is our cancer awareness game. Monday is our whiteout game. In between games, you have a chance to meet our spring teams, baseball, softball, along with tennis, golf, and track and field, and pick up 2018 scheduled posters. So a lot ahead, a lot coming up. Softball season starts this week. Baseball starts next week. Getting ready to roll. We appreciate all of your support for coming out tonight. Again, for the official information on Panther Athletics, make sure to visit us at pbpanthers.com. Also, mark your calendars for the beginning of spring football practice. 
March 19th. March 19th, first day of spring ball. Spring game will be Saturday, April 14th. In conjunction with, with the softball doubleheader, so you'll see more information coming out about that as we get a little bit closer to those dates, so keep those dates in mind. Again, spring football practice will start on March 19th. Uh, those are open, Coach Dooley, the staff love to see you out there to support, take a look at the 2018 Panthers as we get ready to make this run, hopefully from Houston to Atlanta in 2018. Our hearts and minds clear? Dr. Myers, thanks for blessing the food. You'll be free to move to my left, your right. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of the evening.